Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer of the Officer Training Commanding Board, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School Class 0524. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers, worthy of special trust and confidence. The 0524 class team includes class officers Lieutenant Bolton and Lieutenant Steinke, class recruit division commander, senior chief petty officer Long, and class drill instructor, gunnery sergeant Casper. Class 05224, attention! Hands salute. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. <laughs> Officer Training Command Newport, arriving. Naval Education and Training Command arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Fastenot will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, you have called us out upon the ways, united as one body in service to our country. We are warriors of the seas and protectors of our American way of life. May we never forget we are called to lead and to serve. We thank you for our friends and family that have supported us through this journey. Much will be demanded of them in the future. Lord, bless them with faith, hope, and love. Protect us as we travel home to a new school or a new duty station. Go before us. May we all do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. We pray this in your eternal name. Amen. Hi, boys. Ready? Face. Forward. March. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Class, 
Ready, seat. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cherico, I'm Cochran, General Gray, Captain Martinson, Colonel Bennett, distinguished guests, veterans, service members, Officer Training Command staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, the soon-to-be commissioned officers from OCS Class 0524. Good morning. Good morning, sir! I'm excited to welcome 62 newest graduates into one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers, that of a Naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the remarkable individuals seated here. It's enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family and friends. On behalf of the Navy and the Grateful Nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, I'm proud of each and every one of you. You all had many other options than volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you fulfillment. You have completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You've overcome obstacles. Nothing was handed to you except opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. You've seized that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate you for this significant and memorable achievement. It's now time to embrace a new opportunity to lead what is truly the Navy's most precious resource, the backbone of the force, the sailors, and the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You'll be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you are doing significant and meaningful work for our country. The mission of the Navy is of tremendous importance to our nation and the world. America is counting on you to deter aggression, defend our national security interests, and preserve our way of life. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country 100% effort. Nothing else will suffice. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You're about to embark on a great adventure, one in which I hope you find professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had, and regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations, I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Jeffrey Cherico, Commander of Naval Education and Training Command. Admiral Cherico is a native of Saginaw, Michigan, and a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. He holds a master's degree in National Security Strategy from the National War College. At sea, he's deployed with Attack Squadron 75 aboard USS Enterprise and with Strike Fighter Squadron 81 aboard USS Dwight P. Eisenhower, both with Carrier Air Wing 17. He's completed department head tour with BFA 136, attached to Carrier Air Wing 7 aboard USS John Kennedy and the USS George Washington. He commanded the Blue Diamonds of BFA 146 and deployed twice on board USS John C. Stennis as part of Carrier Air Wing 9. He also commanded Carrier Air Wing 2 while assigned to USS Ronald Reagan and the Strike and Warfare Commander for Carrier Strike Group 9. Shore assignments include Fleet Replacement Squadron Instructor Pilot, Assistant Safe Security Officer, and Assistant Training Officer while assigned to BFA 106. He was the Electronic Warfare Branch Chief for the Joint Staff, Deputy Director for Mobile Operations, and the Resource Sponsor for Naval Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Capabilities, and Director of Battle Space Awareness. He stood up the Digital Warfare Office as Acting Director on the Navy Staff, and he served as Chief of, Chief of Staff for Commander of Naval Air Forces, and completed additional tours with the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, as Battle Director for the Combined Air and Space Operations Center, and IUD Cutter. 
As a flag officer who serves as the deputy director for global operations on the joint staff, director for fleet integrated readiness and analysis, U.S. Police Forces Command, and as commander of Carrier Strike Group 4. February of 2023, the president nominated for promotion in a second star, and in June of 2023, he became the 21st commander of the Naval Education and Training Command. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy and the training Naval forces to prevent and decisively win wars. We are privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Jeff Caesar Cherko. Thanks, Skipper. General Gray, where are you? Trigger down, tracking. So, the blue F-16s, high blue F-18s, there's always a little uh, tension in the room when two fighter pilots are uh, near each other. We likely did not uh, fight in training, but if we did, I'll give you credit for this one. So welcome. All right, thanks, uh, thanks for inviting me here to honor these uh, soon-to-be ensigns. I know we have a lot of veterans in the crowd, I know we have a lot of friends and family. We're all here to welcome these men and women into the profession of arms. If you served on active duty, if you're a veteran, please stand up, please. Thank you. Please have seats. The active duty around you, these veterans who just stood up, know best the challenges and opportunities that these new ensigns are going to experience when they start learning to lead. And for the moms and dads, family, friends, this may be your first exposure to the United States military and the United States Navy. Five of my children are serving in the Navy. I trust the Navy. I care very deeply how lethal and survivable the Navy is. Thank you for raising them. I've got a man. The theme of this ceremony is character and service. General James Anderson, he's a West Point graduate, wrote a book. His title is called Becoming a Leader of Character. And he stated that our character starts with our thoughts. Our thoughts influence our words. Our words lead to our actions. And our actions, repeated over time, become our habits. And finally, our habits form our character. I start off with that quote from an Army soldier at a Navy commissioning ceremony, because General Anderson wore our nation's cloth for 41 years. And I did it for that specific reason. Because anyone who learned to lead over 41 years might be worth listening to, even though they're from the Army. I love my Army brothers and sisters. So in preps for today, I found myself trying to remember what the speaker at my graduation and commissioning at the Naval Academy uh, said 33 years ago. I don't have the faintest memory, I truly don't. My mom reminded me recently, he was the Vice President of the United States, and I'm no Vice President. So I'll do my best to tell you something memorable, and I guarantee you will remember something. Anyway, when I was in your shoes, right in front of me, all I could think about was being able to walk across the stage as fast as possible, receive my diploma, take my commissioning oath, and drive as fast as legally non-ticketable down to Pensacola to start pursuing my dream of becoming a carrier aviator. So in an effort to help you remember something from this speech, I want to provide a few quotes from people that I consider leaders of character. People's, people who have served for me as guideposts as I've navigated my 33 years. All right, Theodore Roosevelt, if you could kick the person in the pants responsible for most of your trouble, you would not sit down for a month. Soon each of you will be placed in positions of leading sailors. I have found that there are two frames of reference through which to lead. Trust the best in everyone you meet until they prove otherwise, or force them to prove through fear that they're worthy of your attention. 
I strongly recommend you lean towards the former by demonstrating trust. When you demonstrate your trust in your sailors and your chiefs through leadership, you truly will avoid being the one kicking your own butt. General Patton said, never ever tell people how to do things. Tell them what to do, and they will surprise you with their ingenuity. The greatest thing you men and women can do as leaders of character is to decide what needs to be done and spend your time describing the why to your sailors. Following this advice, I've more often than not been absolutely delighted with how my teams have solved a problem. However, there are a few times I've been shocked. Once I was very frightened, and a few other times I had no idea what they just did. But giving your sailors ownership of the solution and top cover when they make an honest mistake builds the strongest team. General Colin Powell said, the most important thing I've learned is that soldiers watch what their leaders do. You can give them classes, you can lecture them forever, but it's your personal example that they will follow. Put another way, if someone had a phone out while you were exercising your leadership, would you want it to be used in a training video for your division or your regiment? You are always being watched. This quote comes back to the habits developed through your thoughts, words, and actions. Don't leave in fear. Lead from a position of empathy, humility, and always courage. You will make mistakes, learn from them, and more importantly, be honest with your sailors. Be honest when you make a mistake. None of us are infallible. And those you lead will move mountains for a leader of character who is honest and courageous. A couple more words of advice. Be accessible. That means go to your sailors and remove barriers. Ask them if there's anything they need to do their job better, faster, safer, or more efficiently. Be approachable. Be ready to answer a lot of questions, but don't be afraid to ask. Show those you lead that you care. Words are cheap, but action is priceless. Be reasonable. Listen to your sailors' ideas. Be willing to take some risk so that they can try. And sometimes the 80% solution is perfect. And sometimes the 51% solution is good enough. It's your job to know when that distinction matters. Be humble. Being a leader is not about being the person in charge. It's about taking care of your people and helping them be successful. There is much joy in other people's success, and every parent in this room knows that's true. Be persistent. Get after the tasks you know are important and never let them go. And be positive. Find and believe in the goodness in every person you meet and support them in every challenge they face and they will face many. And finally, be passionate. In other words, be committed to the cause. Be committed to your service. Be invested in the care of your sailors. That's the real burden of leadership. I started this down with a uh, started this out with a trigger down tracking, uh, so I got I got to finish this sea story here. Just trust me, a fighter pilot's time on stage with the mic isn't complete until I do. It does start with another quote from Martin Luther King: "If a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep the streets, even as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed, or Shakespeare wrote, wrote poetry." He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. It's probably the most formative quote of my career. So where am I going with this? As you men and women head out to the fleet, you should be really excited to take on the world. I was. Approximately 30 years ago, I just completed my fleet replacement syllabus was qualified to fly the venerable A6E intruder in combat. I could fly at 200 feet off the ground at 540 knots at night, and I could take it down to 100 feet during the day, in the mountains, in any weather. I could make my bomb hit the target to the split second, and I could catch the three-wire on my aircraft carrier in torrential rain at night with a 50 deck. So as I walked into my first fleet squadron, 
I was in the Paralot, which holds your flight gear. And I was turning a big heavy bag of flight gear over to the petty officer second class, and he said, hey, sir, Skipper just called. He wants you up in his uh, office. Well, I knew I hadn't been in the squadron long enough to do anything wrong, so I probably wasn't in trouble. But I was thinking, oh yeah, he's heard of me. I'm that guy. He's probably gonna tell me I'm gonna take over some pretty important job, maybe air to ground weapons training officer. A little unheard of for a brand new JG, but I mean, it was me, right? I could drop a bomb into a barrel on the bombing range. It made total sense. I knew I was a new guy, but I figured the squadron really needed somebody just like me to train them. I remember all this was an inner monologue. I was whisper thinking. I did not say this out loud. I may have a good imagination, but I'm not stupid normally. Well, the CO's outer monologue went a little bit like this. Hey, Lieutenant JG Chair Wacko. And that's not how you say my name. I need you to do something for me. Whisper thinking, here it comes. I stood up a little straighter. You know, being an all-weather attack uh, pilot is pretty glamorous. He said, we got a big day tomorrow. I said, yes, you do. We're gonna be really busy. And I was thinking, here it comes. I wonder what he wants me to do. He said to me, we've got a unit sweep. I was definitely not ready for that. Some of you in the audience know what a unit sweep is. Let me explain it. It means that yours truly was now the urinalysis officer. <laughs> this is what you're gonna remember from the speech. <laughs> not the air ground training officer, not the line division officer, nothing close. I can't believe he said, your analysis officer. And I still can't believe I just said it now. But he continued, he said, hey, the Sunday punchers are a huge squadron. Started to deflate. We've got 350 officers and sailors. That's a lot of lies. He said, don't screw it up. Chief's waiting outside to give you the paperwork. That was my intro to the fleet. What do I do? Well, I don't know how you put lipstick on that pig, but I did. Did some quick soul searching and I decided I'd become the Michelangelo of your analysis paperwork, the Beethoven of bottles, the Shakespeare of very securely taping boxes of bottles. You get the picture. So for 30 years I haven't forgotten that moment and how it taught me to view whatever job I was given. Every job from that day. Someone like me, maybe now you'll remember something. Think character, not your analysis, but either one's a winner. So I'm gonna leave you with one charge. Every one of you look at me right now. Whatever you do, endeavor to become the best. The Naval Service is the world's greatest apprentice program. And you all have the ability and the opportunity to pursue perfection in everything you do. You may not reach perfection, but the sailors you are about to lead and the nation you are about to serve both need you to try. Thank you. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. All military personnel in uniform, please come to position of attention. Class 05 TAC 24, attention! Class, raise your right hand. Repeat after me, I state your name. I state your name. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy, Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Do hereby accept such appointment. Do hereby accept such appointment. And do solemnly swear. And do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. 
Thou art true faith and obedience to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office on which. Of the office on which. I am about to enter. I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Class, ready, seats. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer and the guests of honor for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command, Newport. The Lieutenant Thomas Eddy Honor Award is presented for the ensign who achieved the highest overall average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign Smith. Ensign Smith has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The Rear Admiral Stephen E. Lucy Academics Award is presented to the ensign who achieved the highest academic average. This award is being presented to Ensign Dow. Ensign Dow has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center in Panama City, Florida. Ensign Dow is a distinguished Naval graduate. The Chappell Carney United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award is presented to the ensign who achieved the highest overall grade in physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign Masqua. Ensign Masqua has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS-30 USS Canberra homeported in San Diego, California. The Commander Jack Levitt Leadership Award is presented to the ensign chosen by the class for the peer who most inspired them and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. This award is being presented to Ensign Gray. Ensign Gray has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Baer. Ensign Bodney. Ensign Bodney has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bodney has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Gerard has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Cabrera has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Cabrera is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Faircloth has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Glass has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Nagel Rivera has been designated as an oceanography officer and has been assigned to basic oceanography accession training in Gulfport, Mississippi. Ensign Rodriguez has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Abel has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. Ensign Amadi has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-20 USS Oakland, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Anderson has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Arcos Honeycutt has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Austinson has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Babiak Jr. has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Ballesteros has been designated as a student naval aviator 
and to the Science of Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Burnett has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bilek has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Beaver has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Bland has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-46 USS Tortuga, homeported in Little Creek, Virginia. Ensign Lynch has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-42 USS Germantown, homeported in San Diego. Ensign Botkus has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Capers Sr. has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and was assigned to LPD-22 USS San Diego, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Cabaretta has been designated as a civil engineering officer and has been assigned to Naval Submarine Base Kings Bay in Kings Bay, Georgia. Ensign Clayball has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Crosby has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Crosby is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Dean has been designated as a civil engineering officer and has been assigned to Marine Corps Air Station Miramar in Miramar, California. Ensign DeLuna has been designated as an information professional officer and has been assigned to information professional basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Dieta Spiff has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to supply corps school in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Faulkner has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Gardino has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to crypt cryptologic warfare officer basic course in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Goggin has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Green has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Green is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Hardings has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hoffman has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS-30 USS Canberra, homeport in San Diego, California. Ensign Isaras has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Joseph has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to CG-60 USS Normandy, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Legron has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS-14 USS Manchester, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Yu has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lugo has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lungmiss has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Luongo has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Martinson has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Mooney has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Mooney is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Nelson has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to intelligence officer basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Peterson has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to supply corps school in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Ramos has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to cryptologic warfare officer basic course in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Rendon has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Robertson has been designated as an information professional officer and has been assigned to information professional basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Robinson has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Ruffin has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Ruffing is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Slayton has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Swartz has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-87 USS Mason, homeported in Mayport, Florida. 
Ensign Valdez has been designated as an aviation maintenance duty officer and has been assigned to helicopter C Combat Squadron 25 in Agana, Guam. Ensign Wilson has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS-8 USS Montgomery, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Zionick has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to flight school in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Norman has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Supply, school, supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Norman is a distinguished naval graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. Please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Class 05 Tac 2 4. Attention! Ladies and gentlemen, we will now conclude the ceremony. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their photograph. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field. On behalf of the commanding officer, thank you for attending today's ceremony.